Hey guys, welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. What's up guys? In today's episode, we're going to focus on contentment and I will give you my best tips on how to feel okay with where you are in life right now and have less resistance to the way things are. First, let's talk about happiness. We live in a society where being the happiest version of yourself at all times has become a fixation. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there's no way to be happy all the time. And all the self-help gurus that will tell you otherwise are not doing you any favors. I'm a regular person, just like you. And like everyone else, you and I have negative thoughts and negative feelings. The one thing we should try not to have, though, is resistance. But why is resistance so bad for us? You've probably heard Carl Jung's famous quote, What you resist, persists. The truth is, The more time and energy we invest in fixing our circumstances, the bigger our problems seem to grow. So how can you stop resisting the turn of events and start accepting your life as it is right here, right now? The first step is to acknowledge what's really going on in your mind. As I mentioned before, I'm no stranger to negative thought patterns, which is why I use tools from cognitive behavioral therapy to help my clients become aware of their negative beliefs and step-by-step reframe them into ones that actually help them be happy and achieve their goals. So how does this work? You notice a thought that's been bothering you and acknowledge your bodily response to that thought in the form of sensations. Then you write down the intensity of the emotion you felt and think of a more positive thought to substitute the first one with. That's how reframing works. Spot it, feel it, and reframe it so that your mind becomes your partner, not your enemy in life. Now let's get to step number two. Step number two is to start focusing on your strengths. If you have resistance towards thinking about, talking about, or making things happen in one particular aspect of your life, you may have let yourself turn into a victim of your thoughts. Some people don't like to talk about money. For others, relationships and romance are like the Pandora's box they don't even want to think about opening. We are all different, and each of us has their own unique problematic areas. But very often, the problem turns out to be what I call the scarcity mindset. The scarcity mindset is when you feel like you don't have or you just can't do enough in one certain area of your life, no matter how hard you try. The scarcity mindset all comes down to not feeling good about yourself. If you are content with who you are, know your strengths and weaknesses, and choose to focus on your strengths and the positive impact that you can make on the world, then you can achieve almost anything you put your mind to. So how can you identify and focus on your strengths. Let's do a little exercise. You'll need a pen and a piece of paper. Write down five things that you like about yourself. They can be physical traits or character traits, it doesn't matter. Once you're done, I want you to read them out loud. Contemplate your strengths as you read them out loud. Remember, you are reminding and refocusing yourself on them. Practice this exercise every single day for three weeks straight and you will see how you will find yourself slowly shifting your focus on the things that are great about yourself and your life right now. Now let's get to step number three. Practice mindfulness. There is a good reason why I bring up mindfulness on almost every topic I talk about on this podcast. According to neuroscientist David Rock, mindfulness can rewire your brain to be less emotional and more rational. It's a way of staying in control of your emotions and surroundings by observing them non-judgmentally without the need to change them. It is also what gives you the freedom to choose your response in highly emotional situations instead of letting yourself be consumed by the heat of the moment 
and do or say things that later you will probably regret. Mindfulness is one of the most powerful ways to practice acceptance and become content with where you are in life at the moment. It doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't strive for more. It's just a little reminder to center yourself in the present moment and enjoy what's already in your life. And now, the most powerful tool and step number four in today's episode is to keep a gratitude journal. Gratitude is the single most powerful tool I have found when it comes to feeling content with life. When you are grateful for the people, things and experiences that you have in your life, you will inevitably shift your mindset to abundance. Here's how you can start keeping a gratitude journal. Every day, write down three things that you are grateful for. You can try it for yourself and find out which time suits you best. I've tried it both early in the morning and late at night before going to bed. And what I can tell you from my experience is that if you do it in the morning, you will start your day on a more positive note. And if you do it in the evening, you'll most likely fall asleep with a smile on your face. So it's entirely up to you. I've made a whole episode on gratitude, where I go into depth with different techniques on how you can practice it on a daily basis, so you can check it out if you're interested. Now, let's recap the four steps to be content with your life. Acknowledge what's going on in your mind. Focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. Practice mindfulness on a daily basis. And keep a gratitude journal. Alright guys, that's all for today. Thanks for listening. As always, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to get my best advice on how to simplify your life and have great relationships with others. Like this episode if you liked it and comment down below if you're interested in a topic that you would like me to make an episode on. I love you guys and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye!